Hello, I'm Alan Povey from Denso Aftermarket UK, a technical support manager for the whole of the UK market. We're here today to talk about spark plug technology and how it develops and some of the issues that we come up, up, up against in the marketplace. It's nice to know a little bit about the history, so if we think about where we've come from, a basic ignition system with a coil and a distributor, putting around about 20,000 volts down to the spark plug, to an ECU, which provides anywhere between 15,000 and 30,000 volts to the spark plug. Spark plug technology has changed dramatically within that period of time. So we've come from what we call a standard nickel plug to a super ignition plug. Basically able to cope with different fuel mixtures, different CO2 emissions. The construction has changed very little since its original concept. Basically what's changed is the materials that we're now using. As a manufacturer, what we're doing with the spark plug is controlling heat. We control the ceramic insulator at 600 degrees C, because that burns away any residue carbon. The heat transfer of a plug takes place where the ceramic meets the jacket. So in this instance, basically we have a long cone spark plug. 60% of the heat will be transferred as the heat hits the ceramic through the steel casing into the water jacket. If it was a performance engine, we'd have a lot shorter cone, so we transfer the heat faster. Basically, as a manufacturer, what we're doing with the spark plug is controlling heat. We keep the ceramic insulator at 600 degrees C. That burns away any residue carbon. The basic heat transfer takes place where the ceramic insulator meets the jacket. That's transferred through to the water jacket. 60% of the heat is transferred this way. This is actually a long cone spark plug, so therefore it works in a hot engine. If we were using a performance engine, we'd have a lot shorter cone, so basically the heat transfers faster away from the actual tip of the plug. As a manufacturer, we prefer a single electrode on the earth, as do many other manufacturers, although we do have multi-electrodes in the marketplace. Multi-electrodes are designed to either give you a longer duty cycle or overcome a particular engineering problem. A single electrode now has an extended profile where it sticks anywhere up to 2.5 mil into the combustion chamber. This gives you actually a leaner burn, lower CO2 emission and a better performing engine. Right. One of the major innovations in the marketplace is the size of the actual firing electrode. As an industry we've, we've dropped from a 2.5 mil firer now down to a 0.4 mil iridium fire in some instances. This actually gives us a more concentrated spark but therefore we need to use precious metals to actually achieve this to stop the actual firing electro breaking down. Iridium although it is a, is a metal is actually a constructive metal as far as spark plug technology goes and it's actually made up of uh, iridium, platinum, nickel, gold and silver. Very hard wearing, very good conductor of electricity. But in a combustion chamber, what it actually means is we could quadruple the flame or the corona. We're here now to talk about the installation of a spark plug, which has probably become now more important than ever before. As an industry, we prefer the single electrode, but there's a particular position in the combustion chamber. The actual open end of the spark plug should be in line with where the fuel is coming into the combustion chamber. Um, that gives you a maximum uh, acceleration response, low CO2 emissions, as well as better performance overall, better fuel economy. It's important, therefore, that we get the correct torque. If we take a, an M14 spark plug, which is this, the actual installation torque is between 20 and 25 newton metres, or hand tight, half a turn. So if we're really, really good, we'll mark the top of the plug, so that we know where the opening is, we can install it at hand tight, look at where the inlet manifold is, and then carry out the correct torquing process to maximise the efficiency of the engine for the, for the individual user. What I'd like to do now is show you some typical examples of incorrect installations of spark plugs and the common problems as an industry we're getting. Here's a typical example of a plug that's been over -taught. Due to vibration, the, and overheating, we've lost the firing electrode and also the ceramic now moves in and out. 
causing a plug failure. And here's another example of a plug that's been massively overtorqued. We've actually had a failure, structural failure, so that the screw section of the plug has now become detached. This would cause us a problem in, re in respect of removing the screw threaded section from the combustion chamber. And here's another example. This plug's not only been over -taught, but be due to mislocation of the plug socket on the plug, as it's been tightened, it's actually broken the ceramic. This has rendered this plug completely useless. Anytime we see a moving ceramic, we know that the plug has been over -taught. This has actually broken the contact between the steel jacket and the ceramic insulator. This causes an overheating and vibration problem causing the premature failure of the plug. In conclusion, the removal of the plug from the combustion chamber can actually tell us a lot about the condition of the engine. A good plug will be biscuit coloured. If the plug is black, it's telling us that the combustion chamber is too cold. If it's melted, it's telling us that the combustion chamber is too hot. We therefore need to undertake further investigation with regard to, has the plug been installed to the correct torque setting? Is it the correct heat range for the vehicle we've got it applied to? Or has the vehicle been modified? That concludes our spark plug presentation. Thank you very much.